So let's, let's start talking about our go live day. This was me really about two years ago. So, uh, so uh, all right, let's talk about uh, getting rid of paper charts. Uh, as Dr. Mullen said, Kachina has been around for many years. We had lots of charts. Half of them were in storage in like five storage bins about a mile away from our office. And uh, now we're down to almost nothing. And it's been a fun, sweet transition to make. And I'm going to describe the, our process of how we got rid of these paper charts. Um, we, we made the decision to, that we were going to scan all of the current patient records. Um, anyone who had a current chart, uh, we wanted that data available to us. And, and there's a couple different options. Not all practices make that decision, but we felt it was important, mainly because one of our doctors, she's really anal and she wanted to have all of that at her fingertips. And so we said, all right, let's do it. So this is what we did. Um, so what we have a process called, and this was, part of this was I brought from the uh, my experience in residency of transitioning to next gen, but uh, w the abstraction process, and I'll describe how this happened. Um, uh, during the first appointment, our goal was, was to get rid of the paper chart after the first visit since going live. So the way we did that was uh, I would sit down with the patient um, with their thick chart, uh, chart of megaly as I like to call it, and uh, we'd sit down and I'd say, Mrs. Jones, we're, we're right in the middle of this uh, big transition from paper to computer. Let's go over your chart for a minute and just glean all the important information. And we'd look through and I'd, I'd be talking and adding the medication list. We'd get in their family history, family history social history. And uh, once I did that, I'd, sit, uh, I'd pull out the, like the last mammogram report, that's in primary care, that's important, the last labs with cholesterol. And then I'd slap a big A on it. Um, and then once we'd get all the, the other stuff out, um, like I said, the last colonoscopy mammogram, we'd put a PC, which stood for paper chart. And once a chart, and this doesn't really show up well, but uh, we have an A and a PC on the chart. And once anyone in our office saw a chart with an A and PC, that's off to the scanning table, and we're never going to see that chart again. And uh, so that was the fun transition we did the first year of this. And as Dr. Mullen said, we, we made this transition from paper uh, for, to computer in less than a year. Um, she's showing right now uh, a little bit about the scan chart. So uh, all of the data that we wanted to have, we had at our, at our fingertips with two or three clicks, um, as opposed to having to run to a chart room and try to find a chart. Um, you could pull up the last PAP, last labs, and, and that's what she's demonstrating right there. Um, there's different areas of the chart that will, uh, uh, so for example, here's the, the chart, um, so all that, that, that PC, um, that mammogram report, all those labs are sitting in this paper chart file. And, uh, and so we had a very streamlined process of how this would happen. And, and like I said, we tried to get rid of all those charts after the first visit. Now, me being new to the practice, thankfully my volume was less. And so I did probably a big bulk of the work because I was seeing their partner, their patients when they were trying, when they were overflowing to me. And so uh, I feel like I probably did a good portion, but Certainly, Dr. Mullins had many late nights uh, making that transition at first. Um, so here's the, the chart scanning process. By the way, that is not me. It, it really looks like me, but I promise it's not. Um, the, uh, the chart, so once the chart was uh, prepped, it would go off to the scanning table. We had a staff member who was a full-time scanner for that first year, and uh, they had a list of what items, for example, she, they would pull out the immunization list and that would go into a certain area. They would pull out the medication list, even though I'd already entered them manually, the old medicine on paper list would be scanned to a certain area, and so on and so forth. Um, so the bottom line is we had all the data we needed at our fingertips, and that was important to us. So let's talk about the cost of this process. We, uh, um, in the first year of going live, we scanned 4,000 charts. Uh, we averaged about 30 minutes per chart for our scanner to do, 15 minutes prepping the chart, pulling out the paper clips, um, getting it all set, um, and 15 minutes doing the actual scanning. Um, you know, when you, we ended up paying uh, one full-time employee about $12 per hour for 2,000 hours. That came to about $23,000 the first year. Um, the second year, we had less volume, and uh, 
now had a part-time scanner, and now we don't have any. Um, we've spent about $6,000. Now, before this all started, we, we got some quotes for, because you can certainly hire an outside company to do this for you. And uh, this, the, we got a couple quotes, and I think this was the low quote was $100,000. <laughs> so as you can see, the, the big difference if you, uh, have a, if you have a process to do it on your own. And um, granted, we did this without the help of ASCOMP, and I, I'm sure they could probably help in that process too, but um, quite a big savings difference when you uh, do this on your own. So I'd encourage, uh, however you're going to do an EMR, um, try doing a lot of that kind of stuff on your own.